Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to do a little bit of recycling and I'm going to melt down some of these plastic lids here. But let's take a step back and talk about the purpose of this project. These are what they call pen blanks. And you turn them on the lathe to make pens like these ones here. Now the white one in the front here is Corian and that's what this white pen is made of here. Unfortunately, they've discovered that the dust from the Corian is not good for you. So in our other materials course at our Woodturners Club, we've stopped using Corian and we're looking at some types of other materials to turn. As a test, I'm going to make some pen blanks out of the HDPE plastic here in the containers. And if that works out well, I'll go a step further and I'll make larger items out of this plastic. I've done a bit of research on YouTube and there are a bunch of videos out there that show you how you can melt down and mold plastic at home. However, one of the issues is that you can get air bubbles or voids in the plastic and that can ruin the item that you're trying to turn. From what I understand, it's better to have the plastic under pressure to push out most of the year, similar to how they do it in injection molding. So I'm going to make a mold out of steel. And it's quite simple. It just has a main body with a diameter of 22 millimeters in the middle. And then you have this plug that goes into that hole and that gets all squashed up in the vise to apply pressure. Now on YouTube I've seen a few different variations of this, mainly made out of wood, and they clamp it together, and that seems to provide the best results with the least amount of air bubbles and voids in your blank that you're trying to make. I'm going to start with turning up the mould, and then I'll talk about how I'm going to melt the plastic a little bit later on. I start with a piece of three quarter inch pipe and I cut this off 150 millimeters long. That's around about six inches. I then turn the inside diameter to 22.5 millimeters. Once that's done, I use a bit of sandpaper on a mandrel and clean the inside up to give it a better finish. That will allow the plastic to come out easily. That part is complete and the finish came out pretty good as well. Now the diameter here is half a mil bigger than the drawing. That allowed me to clean up the inside properly. The next step is to work on the base. This is a piece of 50 millimeter solid bar. I'm drilling an eight and a half mil hole here so I can tap it out to M10. And I'm going to use a countersunk bolt, so I need to countersink this hole. And that works great. I've tightened up the bolt and I'm turning the bottom so it's all nice and flat. I broke the parting tool on this lathe a while ago, so I'm going to part this off a different way. Come on, you wouldn't expect anything less from me, would you? Quick and easy with an angle grinder. And that's put back in the lathe and tidied up. I'm putting a mark on here so that it's going to be easier to line up the pipe for when I weld it. And that worked out pretty good. Over to the welding bench. I clamp it in the vise to keep it all nice and straight. There's only three tack welds here. This screw can be removed so that I can push the plastic out once it's molded. Now I'm going to work on the plug. This is a short piece of 25mm round bar. Tidy up the face. And then I start turning this down to 22mm. The main body fits on nicely. 
Now I'm drilling out and I'm tapping for an M6 bolt. The part that was held on the lathe is cut off and I tidy up the face off camera. So that's pretty much the mould complete. The plug slides in there easily. Now the diameter here was 22 millimeters and the hole was 22 and a half. So there's quarter of a millimeter all the way around. That screw hole allows me to put a bolt in there. And then if the plastic comes up the side and jams the plug, I'll be able to pull the plug out. All right, so I'm going to use a sandwich press to melt the plastic. And here is a old second hand one. You can see there's a little bit of damage here on the non-stick surface and it's missing a lens on the top here. But I'm going to use this one to do the melting and I've bought a brand new one for the house. These are silicon gloves. Unfortunately, there's no fingers, but the silicon gloves are really good as the plastic does not stick to them. All right, let's get started. Here's a bit of baking paper so that the plastic doesn't stick to the machine. I do have some Teflon sheets on order, but they haven't arrived yet. So baking paper seemed to work fine. Now on the YouTube videos, they tell you to fold it over and fold it over and put it back in again. So I did that a few times. Now I melt down some red bottle tops and I mix the black and the red together. So I kind of mix this maybe a little bit too much. As you'll see later, the end result was almost completely black. Now I've preheated the mold, so that is hot. And this is the difficult part, trying to get it in the mold. I'm sort of pushing it down with the screw that I had. And that really mixed up the colors. And I think that's another reason why it turned out black. I've got the plug and pushing it down with that now. And I'll try and get as much as I can down there. Then I take it to the garage and put it in this extremely big vise and add a lot of pressure in there. Now I did notice the plastic shrunk a little bit so I had to keep going out there and winding the pressure up on the vise. The mold and plastic are now cooled off so now I need to get this piece of overflow taken out. I use a chipping hammer for an arc welder and that came off relatively easily. And you can see here that the plastic has come up between the plug and the inner wall and I did expect that. That made the plug a little bit hard to get out, but I just used a screw and jack the plug out. Then the bottom screw comes out so I can push out the mould. And it actually came out very easily because the overall diameter had shrunk a bit. This is the second batch and I've used multiple colours in this one. Again, I take the bottom screw out so I can knock it through. And I have to jack out the plug again. This one was a lot tighter than the last one. So I give it a few taps on the bottom there. And it comes out. And then that's the blank, which I think was really good. Now I give them both a bit of a spin up in the lathe just to see what they came out like underneath. I cannot see any air bubbles or any cavities or anything in them, so I'm very happy with those. Now as you saw, the hard part was trying to get the molten plastic down in the tube here. If I used a bigger diameter, I don't think we'd have much of a problem, but it's a little tricky for the small diameter. The other thing is I need a longer plug. You could see when I wound it up in the vise, I had to use a screw, which was screwed into the end there, just cause the plug got pushed in so far that it went further in than the edge of the tubing. If I do use the mold again, I may consider making a longer plug. Lastly, here are some close-ups of the finished product. 
As mentioned, I'm pretty wrapped with these results for the first time of melting bottle caps. Now, I'm no expert in this. This is the first time I've done this. I have learned a lot from those videos that I mentioned earlier in this video, and I'll be doing a bit more experimentation with this as well. But I hope some of you guys learned something. I mean, this is good if you want some plastic to turn up in the lathe and you don't have any, you can melt some down and make up your own blanks. I hope everyone has a great day, and once again, thanks for watching.